My name is Hal Saeed Lethalis. Once a general to the unkind, a militant arm of the Shadarkai, whose sole purpose is to bring the will of our matron, the Raven Queen, to fruition. I abandoned that path when I discovered that our sect was compromised. No longer were we serving the will of the Raven Queen. Instead, we were spilling innocent blood for our leader's own selfish means. That day, I defied my kin. I was prepared to turn from my matron. And so, I was left alone on the material plane. I've wandered here and made a life now, serving the harbors. I heed their words. One can never have too much information. Too much power leads to corruption, and no one should ever be powerless. It is in their name that I return home. Turn to the shadow fell. You wish to know about me. I suppose I can indulge you. My name is Agatha Hastings. I was born and raised in the city of Metal, Vumalor. My parents were wizards that worked with the university researching the planar disturbances. When I was a child, they were killed by an entity from the Shadowfell, and I was spared. After their death, I was taken in by a close friend of theirs from the university, where I was educated and then later became employed. I've spent my life learning all I can about these events, in hopes that no one else will have to go through the same hardships that I have. I've been asked on this mission by the university due to my unique connection with the Shadowfell. My hope for this trip is that I will gain more knowledge to better help me on my path to not only save others, but myself as well. Haha, <laughs> yes, I am Alva the Resilient, but you can just call me Alva. As you can see, I am not from this world you call Etios. I am from a much different world. One day, I walked through what you may call a planar instability and ended up here in your city of Umalor. I met the most beautiful creature, and her name was Mercy. She showed me the university, and then I took her out to see the world. We traveled often, seeing sights unseen. We made our living doing odd jobs and investigation trips for the university. In fact, I last saw Mercy two weeks ago. She went out with the group to investigate this Shadowfell instability. Only two of her companions returned. No one knows what happened to her. So, that is why I'm here, volunteering, stepping up. I will bring Mercy back to me. And if I get a good story out of it, then that is not so bad. Yeah, let me enchant you with stories of worlds you will never know. <laughs> Traveler, how fortunate for you that we meet in this dangerous place. I am Hugo Go of the Gowo, strongest of their outriders and vanguard of the unification. When I am done, the five will stand strong together, and the threat of these rifts will diminish in our lands. Uh, the five? They're the largest of the Uo, uh, tribes or clans in this part of the desert. We have been in these ever-shifting lands for as long as the sands have, and will be for as long as the sands remain. Are you also looking into that great rift? The shadow that dims the sun? It settled over what is rightfully for the Gowo, but we've been unable to loosen its hold over the land. And I suspect that even the five together could not chase it from this place. That is why I've offered to aid the university. I believe their knowledge will prove invaluable in sealing the rift. Hmm. Would you join with me in fighting this threat? Root out its cause, even should it send us 
into the breach. <laughs> then let us travel a while and see if you might be added to the song of my journeys. Hello, everybody, and welcome to session two of Veil of Shadows on here uh, on Open for Adventure. I am Mare, your dungeon master, and we'll quickly go around, introduce ourselves, and who we are playing. Uh, Sev. Hi, I'm Sev, or Guildmaster Sev, and I'm playing Agatha, the human shadow sorcerer. Shadow? Hi, I'm Shadow. I'm playing Alva, who is the Ochanasi Bard. Forda? I'm Forda. I'll be playing You Go Go, the half orc paladin. And Noir. Hi, I'm Noir. Uh, he, him, and I am playing Kalsi Lathalis, the Shadar Kai monk. Also, he, him. And then, Forta, I think you were going to go do a recap? Yes. Bear with me because some of the things that happened, my brain is just like, ah. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so we opened our session speaking with the head scribe, I think she was. Yep. And she gave us the rundown of everything that had happened. They lost a team, or at least half of one, inside the Shadowfell. The half that came back was uh, the half that certain party members hoped would come back. <laughs> Um, so shade was thrown when we went to get further information. Um, there were some heartfelt moments there in the office, and then we went and asked questions, further shade was thrown. Um, we went and talked to a goblin professor, he finally, uh, gave us the pertinent info that Yugo was after, and then we went and got our mounts. And, um, for those who weren't here, that includes a rhinoceros, a broom, a lovely pony, and a horse named Horse. Um, let's see. We go out into the desert. We're trekking along. Everything's going fine. And then the sky goes dim. And we come across... For, you know, a bit, it's just dim. We come across over a hill. And there is a set of, like, a couple hard... Uh, what's the word? Hard stand buildings. A couple tents that are less permanent. And uh, it's just, it's very quiet and nobody answers when Yugo calls out. Um, we quickly find out why when Halseed and Agatha go scouting ahead and discover very disturbing creatures wandering among these tattered tents. Um, they were called Sorrow Sworn. They did a fair bit of damage, all things considered. There was a group fireball. Halsey did monk things and shredded the crap out of at least two of them. Um, and now we're having a talk about that, <laughs> among other things. So we open up to where someone, I don't recall who, pulled up some, maybe not chairs, because there's definitely some burning chairs after the fireball, pulled up into a rough circle where Hal Saeed offered to have a sit down chit chat before entering the breach. Hello. Thank you all for your time. This last encounter showed that we're all capable individually, but as you can all imagine, the Shadowfell will require more from us. So, I'd like to take a moment while our life is not under threat to understand exactly what it is that all of you do, what you're good at, and what we can rely on you to handle. Hmm. This is a wise conversation to have. If we are to move as a unit, we must fight as a unit. To that end, I am 
best suited in the thick of things, and that includes the thick of you all. I can offer support in surprising ways. You'll find you fight better by my side than far from me. I see. I just like to cause chaos. So I have the sword that lights up very bright, many fire. And uh, and then I can help. I can do a little healing here and there. Otherwise, it's mostly damage magic that I do. Also, good berries. I cannot do the latter, but mostly combat and a bit of healing. <laughs> I will admit I'm not used to fighting in groups. Um, my abilities tend to attack multiple features at once. Um, but I am good at moving through the shadows. As am I. I am an able scout. I have been trained to use my hands as weapons, and I have a certain understanding of death that makes it very difficult for me to die. And I can utilize this to show my foes their death tends to draw them away from me. Well, Same. hopefully after this last uh, encounter, we'll learn to work better together. Indeed. I doubt another of those fireballs would be helpful in the Shadowfell itself. I would be fine. Ox, however. Just pets this rhino. <laughs> I, I apologize. I uh, will definitely keep that in check next time Thank we you. find a scuffle. Should you find me a factor in your judgment as to whether or not to unleash its spell, I'm quite nimble, and I trust my ability to escape the wrath of your arcane. So just do it. I'll keep that in mind. I also do not mind getting hit by uh, an occasional fireball, mostly for the story. It, it does make a good story. Mm -hmm. no. But uh, I... I, I have this feeling that our two, um, what is the word that we would use? Uh, scouts? Yes. Uh, perhaps Agatha and yourself, Hal, I think it might be wise that uh, you go and I hold back a little bit and that way, you know, Agatha, if you want to throw a fireball at a lot of things, a lot of time, you're not necessarily doing it at the party as well. Yes, it would be best if I hang back. I am not suited for scouting. <laughs> Says this big buff half-orc in heavy plate armor. <laughs> now, if I recall correctly, I believe, Hugo, you've demonstrated a capacity for healing. Does anyone yeah. else share this ability? Um, Alva did mention she can do a bit of healing. A, a little bit, here and there. I just... Also, if you happen to die, sometimes I can bring you back. Mm, yes. It's a neat little trick I picked up. I have also brought along some equipment for such things. I am unable to heal. However, I am able to subsist off the souls of my fallen enemies. If you see me in combat with something that I have weakened, 
I ask that you let me finish it. Doing so allows me to consume its soul and to restore myself, if only temporarily. I have no problem with that. Hmm. It seems necessary. Thus, I will let it be. I'm just speechless at this. <laughs> Make an interesting story. Where do you continue on from here? Uh, would this be a short rest? Yeah, I'd say this is definitely a short rest. I would definitely say this is like by the time you have, you've traveled, by the time you've had this conversation in the combat, it's probably like um, mid-late afternoon. Uh, yeah, it I'm is, gonna... you could see the sun peak, just its shape through the darkness in the sky, though its light does not cut through the shadow you are all in. I am gonna use some hit die to recover. Sure. Fully. And okay. take my short rest. Perfect. You also gain an additional 1d10 hit die. Or oh, hit yeah. to add. You are a Because I'm a bard. <laughs> nice. Oh, shoot. Where did I write that down? Um, so who made that? Uh, survival check last session. I think it was Ugo Go. I think so. I don't remember. Okay, I think it was Ugo Go. Um, Ugo Go, um, you would estimate that you would make it to the breach probably in several hours if you continued on into the evening. Alright. When we reach it, shall we take a full rest before pressing on? Or do we intend to do so within? I can't imagine it would be smart to rest in in the Shadow Fell. Though perhaps right when we enter would be easier than later. Has anyone here besides me been to the Shadow Fell? No, I have not. No. Individuals from the material plane have a interesting reaction to the Shadowfell. It will be difficult for you to rest at first. But rest is possible in the Shadowfell. Well, that's good to know. You may also lose your mind. I suppose that's also good to know. Hmm. Is this a common effect of planes? I've encountered at least one other with this sort of nature. I have only ever been to the Shadowfell the material play, and the Feywild. There's a lot of places. Feywild is like. It is maddening. I do not recommend it. I did not enjoy it. So perhaps we travel a bit forward, then we take a bit of a rest, and then we plunge headed first into disaster and insanity. That sounds like a reasonable plan. Indeed it does. Onward then. <laughs> He's going to stand up and be ready to go. <laughs> hold, hold your mounts tight. They will also be rather frightened. Ah, Alva. Your pony. If you intend to take her with us into the Shadowfell, we should probably tie her reins to ox. That way she cannot flee too far. 
That would be a good idea. I don't think she's rather fond of horse, unfortunately. So ox might be the more optimal choice. It's just a fucking... <laughs> The camera shows horse just bullying. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, pony! <laughs> Which is hilarious because usually it's the other way around <laughs> with a yeah. horse set up pony. <laughs> oh, oh, poor mistletoe. <laughs> Aww. We must protect this precious bean. Yes. Oh, gosh. So the four of you ride. How close do you uh, set up camp to the breach? Um, I would figure a little over halfway between where we're at and the Shadowfell would be a good idea, so we're not super close if everyone agrees with that. Yeah. The closest I'd want to get is within an hour's ride of it. I was yeah. going to say 120 feet. <laughs> 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 not all of us are from the Shadowfell. Uh, well, I suppose that's fair. <laughs> In time, how close do you get? Hour, 30 minutes, two hours, 120 uh, feet? Uh, <laughs> Alva would push to be uh, uh, 30 minutes outside. Okay. I would try to push that's us fine forward. with me. Okay. Very well. It'd be some brief pushback from Hugo, but like, honestly, he wants to get this over with too. <laughs> The four of you make way towards the breach in the, sa- the shadow fell, leaking into the material plane. The farther, you- the closer you get, the darker it gets. Um, at some point, Alva, you will have to make some kind of light source to see. Um, Got it. Mechanically, it does not really matter what you use, but you will need something to see for you and Mistletoe. And actually, um, horse and ox as well, but... Regardless, you get closer and closer and it does get colder and darker. And by the time you are ready to make camp, you can see in the distance a, not exactly a circle, but definitely a large tear in space where you see darkness flowing and moving across the land. The closer you get, it feels more heavy in the air. Stiller. You don't feel you don't hear or see any feel any wind. And by the time it is actually dark outside of this darkness against the desert. It is pitch black and you see no stars. Or moon. As you set up camp to rest for the night, uh, what are your watches? If you're setting up watch. I'm assuming you're setting up watch. (laughs) I'll go first. I only need to meditate for four hours. Hugo would want to watch somewhere in the middle. I guess I can take up the last one. Uh, sh- I'll also set up. Um, I have alarms, so I'll set up an alarm around where we're camping. Good plan. Um, are are we digging four watches or three? Hmm. If we only take three, which of us will not be the one watching? That is my question. Hmm. Perhaps a contest well, we to take determine four. it. <laughs> or four you watches see, works as well. I, I, I just... I, let, let's just do four. Let's just do four. Fine by me. I'll take second to last. Hugo looks visibly saddened by this. The potential of having not taken a watch and just sleeping the whole night through. Just like choice <laughs> first watch. so okay so first watch is ha- Hal second watch is Hugo 
Yeah. Does Hugo show any signs of like being bummed out that he has to take a watch? Um, like yes, but not seriously so. Okay. He's got no actual qualms with taking a watch. Just he was looking forward to the chance to have a ridiculous game of some kind. <laughs> the possibility of sleep. <laughs> And then third watch was Alva and then Agatha. Okay. Hal, Ugo, and Alva. Actually, everyone's watches go by uneventfully. It seems that whatever creatures snuck out of this breach before either are not coming through or they are long gone in a direction that you have not come from or traveled. However, Agatha, while you are sleeping, feeling the shadow fell press upon your consciousness as you fall asleep, your dreams start out normal, but they slowly fade into an unfamiliar setting you are tall 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 much taller than the trees of the forest you see before you you see mountains out in the distance and the sky is pitch black with no sky nor stars you cannot tell if it is daytime or nighttime neither you're not sure where you are but you move the ground vibrates under your feet as you travel. And this scene goes on and fades until you are woken up from your watch by Alva. Uh, probably definitely shakes me a bit because it's not something I have experienced before. Um, and uh, subconsciously, I wonder if this has something to do with being so close to the Shadowfell, but I don't. Unless Alba says anything about an outward appearance of a, me waking up from a seemingly nightmare, I don't say anything. Um, are you okay, little one? Did you sleep okay? I had a bit of a strange dream, but I suppose it's probably just being so close to the Shadowfell. Um, worries and all of that. I'm sure it's nothing. This is true. I fear that all of us will be a little changed by the end of this, but just remember, you have friends here, and we will take care of each other, and we will get through this together. Thank you, Alva. I know I can always count on you. Um, and then I'm gonna reach over and like ruffle your hair. If you'll permit that. Lots under your hand. Okay. Well, keep your eyes open. Let us know if anything goes wrong. Otherwise, I'm going to go to sleep. Sleep well. As I mentioned earlier, Agatha, your watch is silent. Other than any movement from the mounts or your traveling companions. And eventually, morning does come, though it is hard to tell if it is actually morning with how dark it is. Regardless, you all got a significant amount of rest. Um, Hal Saeed, when you, after you took your rest, what did you do for the rest of the evening? Because you are an elf and you trance. Uh, he started walking towards the entrance a little bit and he's watching his hands to see if they begin to show signs of wrinkling. 
Uh, you're about... How close do you get? Because you're about 30 minutes out, I think y'all said. He, he, yeah. Yeah, he, he would push it a little bit. Sure. Just, um, just like he's walking to see when it starts to happen. 500 feet. 500 feet out. So you gotta walk a good chunk. But you're yeah. fast. You're speedy. Yeah. Um, he just flies back and um, puts the hood on and then gets the mask on. Do you want to describe to everyone what your mask looks like? Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's this guy here. He's just gonna put this on. Nice. Uh, and uh, and he makes sure to uh, cover any exposed skin. So his arms and his uh, his arms are gonna be covered. He's gonna put on uh, gloves. Just no skin whatsoever. Um. So Agatha and Alba, you would notice. Well, probably just Agatha because you had to go out for a good chunk to get out there. Um, but in the morning, you all do see this. The horses, mostly mistletoe, seem anxious the closer you get. The broom doesn't care. Ox does not yeah. care, nor does horse. Yeah, horse has definitely seen this before. <laughs> No, no one sees um, Faze bes be besides Mistletoe with, with the shadows. I'm just going to be petting Mistletoe, uh, whispering sweet nothings in Mistletoe's ear. Um, and, uh, you know, just whispering, telling Mistletoe over and over again, just stay next to Ox. Um, Alva will have uh, in her um, hand an unlit torch, um, but I am going to keep casting light on it um, so that it is a light source okay. as you move forward. You're not actually lighting the torch, you're just using light on the torch. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you continue on? You get closer and closer to this breach of shadow with sh moving darkness, kind of almost like a wind, but it's not actually a wind heading towards you. Hal Saeed, you do f feel your body change a little bit as you get closer to uh, your home plane. Uh, when he feels it start to happen, he's going to stop abruptly and just there's there's something further that you must all be aware of. My home plane has an effect on my appearance. It will not hamper my abilities. It is just rather uncomfortable. And so I will cover it up. But it, he's just going to take the mask off for a second and just show them, this is what it does to me. And he looks old as shit. <laughs> just, just old, like skin sagging from the eyes, old. Will this I... happen to us if we stay here long enough? No. This is the burden of the Shatter Kai. But you would take care to solidify your mental fortitude. I will have an easier time keeping my mind together. And so the cost is my body falls apart. You will need to make sure that you hold close your memories. Because they will be taken from you if you slack. Mm -hmm. Just put the back on. At about the, well. at about the same time, Hal Saeed has this conversation with you, Agatha. You do feel a 
stirring in your chest. Nothing bad, but something deep down stirs. Okay. Well, I certainly don't care what you look like, Al Said. Thank you. I'm not prone to vanity, though this is a discomfort that is shared by most of my kin. It's not important. We should continue. I'm ready if the rest of you are. Then let us be on our way. The shadow fellow awaits. Um, I'm going to pull out my pan flute and I'm just going to play kind of like a, a soft uh, but warm song just as we start to enter the darkness. You enter the breach. As you enter, you feel an icy cold wash all over, all over you. Though for Agatha and Hal Saeed, it is not as chill and it seem, it almost feels like you are passing the threshold of a home as you are, one of you arrive somewhere that you have not been in some time. And another, it feels like you have entered a second home. The vortex behind you is still there, open up into the desert sands, though it is in a negative, like a photo negative. And the group of you have stepped out into a forest full of darkness and moving sh what seem to be moving shadows, though everything is still. Just through the branches, you can see a dark sky void of moon and stars. And everyone except Hal Saeed, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Agatha, you have advantage. You get a plus three on that if you're within 10 feet of me. Fucking paladins. <laughs> <laughs> um, 23. Dirty. Jeez. 13. Okay. And Agatha. Twelve. The three of you, Halseid, you can tell, palpably tell the difference as you walk in, though it, ha it washes over you like a smooth stone. But Agatha, Alva, and Ugo go, you feel an impressionable sorrow and apathy and dread pressed down upon your consciousness, and you need to fight to keep it out. And pressing it upon your entity. Horse also seem, notices it and steps a couple steps to the side, but quickly settles down. Ox does something similar, huffs several times throughout his nose. Seems okay. And Mistletoe, while uneasy, she seems to be okay. Um, I'll resume whispering into Mistletoe's ear, and I'll, uh, I would I would shed another single tear if anybody sees just the quick wipe of a tear. When horse starts to um, freak out, um, Hal is just gonna brush his mane, and in deep deep speech, he's just gonna lull. This is who we are. This is fun. This is so good. You go, just gently pat socks, and then kind of reaches down and goes, pat, pat, to mistletoe. <laughs> and says, you'll be all right, small horse. <laughs> oh, I love it. You have entered the Shadowfell. 
in the middle of a forest of what looks to like to be a forest. So a little bit of a shock going from empty desert into very forested area. Where do you go from here? Hal, Saeed, is is all of the shadow fell like this, or are there different landscapes? The, sh the shadow fell is as wide and varied as the material plane, but it exists to drive you mad, so the landscape which can change in a moment. This place wants you lost and broken. Interesting. Do you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, do you have any suggestions on where we should head? I can't say for sure. But I can tell you that staying still is a death sentence. So we should move. Um, anyone who would like to, you can roll um, general uh, Arcana check for planar stuff. I'm gonna roll it, but I'm not gonna do very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, okay. that's a seven. That's okay. <laughs> um, hold on. <laughs> I got a thing. <laughs> uh, so I rolled an AT. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love it. Um, I rolled a nat 20, which gives it, makes it a 28. Okay. Nice. And Alva, are you running? Are you rolling as well or no? Um, yeah, uh, I got an 11, but I would also say Alva is pretty distracted with the okay. scenery at the okay. same time. That's fair. Um, how say you did Agatha? You are the most well-versed in planar knowledge for different reasons. Hal Sayyid, you grew up here. You are aware of what it's like. Um, so every, basically anything that Noir knows, more or less, is what Hal Sayyid knows in terms of the Shadowfell is basically a kind of like a mirror uh, of the material plane. It's It has a tendency to warp distances and such and the like and can change. Um, Agatha, you have a little bit of different uh, knowledge because of your time at the university. Uh, Vumalor is actually is not from this material plane. So it has books from... Uh, has books about planar lore from other planes. Um, so the fact that you came... You walked from the desert into a forest is odd because any books you have read about the Shadowfell... Um, usually it mirrors what you saw on the material. Uh, so the fact that it's not a desert coming into here is odd, but as Hal Saeed said, it's meant to drive you mad. Um, Hal Saeed, this wouldn't be odd to you unless you have read those books, but um, you knew the shadow fell first and then went to the material plane. So it might not click at first, but if you've read any of the books from the university, this is also something you would know with your role yeah so yeah he he does note that it is strange that there's no, we're not in a desert yeah um he would probably just speak to it as the presumption is that the portal moved us in space as well so we did not enter we did not enter a door as much as we may have entered a tunnel that would that would make sense more sense than us not being just not being in a desert and walking through a doorway into a forest i fear that perhaps we need um uh what do you call it uh like a marker of sorts if we are to travel a distance from the door, we need to know how to get back to the door. What if the land shifts and change? I doubt a marker will aid us as much as we hope. 
I will leave one. Oh, the door. He goes to a tre- you know, tree nearby and kind of starts etching into it, but... As you etch into it, the sap that seeps from the bark is viscous and pitch black, like Icor. Hmm. Some of these trees actually do bear fruit, but it looks gnarled and twisted. Though, Agatha and Halsayed, you would know it's edible. <laughs> Speaking of, Hugo turns to Halsayed and goes, of the creatures and plants here, what is edible and what is poison? Uh, I I will roll a, can I roll a survival check? Um, you, I would say because you're from here, you would know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, so he, yeah. yeah. So he's just gonna go. You can eat that. It will make your stomach hurt for some time, but it is rather good. That will kill you painfully. That will make you cry for days. That's good. <laughs> he's just going. <laughs> and as you're explaining what's edible and what's poison, you go like pulls a basket off a box's back and some sacks out of it and starts putting good in one sack and poison in another and the sadness fruit he kind of looks at and just kind of puts in a third sack for later. (laughs) It's a shame. The the maple from that tree is very delicious, but it will make you speak nothing but the most vile truths to your friends. Um, (laughs) He pulls out a vial and like tries to get some in there. (laughs) Maybe gets two vials. Hey, that could come in handy. Yeah. God, what have I done? (laughs) I'm here for it. I'm writing that down. You've given so many barbarian the cheat sheet. (laughs) Yeah. That's it for this area. But I, well, I, I brought rations for a month, so I, we, I, I will be fine. I also have good berries. <laughs> well, some good berries. Good berries. I have are rations handy. as well. I have brought something that will bring us water, and out from this same basket that he pulled the sacks, he pulls out this jug that's like a funky little extra like uh fa- not faucet spouts off of it they're all corked but it like it just it sloshes in his hand and he puts it back i think you're all seasoned enough adventurers to recognize an alchemy jug when you see one. Oh, oh shoot we should we should have talked to gear <laughs> <laughs> yeah. out of character this basket is a reflavored uh What's the word? Bag of holding. Uh, Handy have yes. a sack. <laughs> well, we should continue forward. Shall we pick a random direction? There's no better way. Before we do, I know that light is not something that we probably would see here, but are there any notably, like, less dark regions, if that makes sense? Before I answer that question, Alva, did you light your torch before or after you entered? Uh, it would have had the light cantrip on it before we entered. Okay, that's fine. Um, make me a perception check, Ugoga. Alrighty. Oh my god, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> what spooky thing is about to happen? <laughs> Well, it's not a natural one. Oh, that's good. Unfortunately, it is a two. Okay. Um, it's all dark. It's all shades of gray and darkness. Especially to your dark vision. The <laughs> way the trees move without wind makes the shadows move, and it's really hard to tell if any direction has is darker than another. Especially with all the trees and stumps and branches in the way, too. Anything going out more than, like, a couple dozen feet is moot point. Hmm. 
with that, Hugo's going to light his lantern. It's hooded. He kind of keeps it in a five foot little radius. It's uh, It doesn't glow in the way that normal lanterns do. Its light is a slightly off color. Your lantern and Alva's torch. The light does not go as far as it should. It is, mm. while it does sh- expel light, it is essentially halved. Mm-hmm. And it does not feel as welcoming and warm as, warm as it normally would. Muted, so to speak. Um, well, I'm going to see if there's anything that I might be able to recognize to point us in a direction. Oh, can I look for tracks? Sure. Um, are you looking for animal tracks, people tracks? And are you looking for any specific, uh, what are you looking for? Spe- where do you want to try and head specifically? I want to see if I can find the tracks of the adventures that made it out. Oh, yeah. Make a survival check. Um, that's going to be a 17. You are able to find some of them, though they are trod upon by others. Um, mm-hmm. it's, they are several weeks old. Um, so f- figuring out and, tra- and following them for um, to get out of the forest is unlikely because it just gets become a more of a mess and more of a mess in general. Yeah. But I could tell what direction they were coming from. Yes. If you wanted to track specifically them, you'll have mm-hmm. a hard time. But you can get a general direction. All right. So he's just going to look at the dirt, kind of pick some of it up. I have a heading. It's not too terribly much, but it's something to start with. Anything is a good start. Hmm. As just gonna fly, uh, a uh, fly and land on horse and start trotting off. It was so unnecessary, and I love it. <laughs> As he was searching for the uh, adventurers tracks, Yugo would have been looking for creature tracks to try and like add to his uh, personal knowledge of what can be found in the region. Okay. Um, you can also roll a survival check. Sick. That is a 17 as well. Um, Since you are not looking for adventure tracks, you are able to find um, more recent animal tracks. Um, It seems like in this area, it's something you do see hoof marks, uh, claw marks, like for large paws, but they're larger. Um, Mm -hmm. And the claws, the claw portion, is longer and digs deeper into the dirt as you find these tracks. So something a little more dangerous than what you would normally find on the material plane. And he's going to ask Halseed, uh, uh, sorry, Halseed about um, these different tracks to see if he knows what they are. Uh, he's going to hop down and take a look at them, and I'm gonna do, uh... Nature. Do nature. Oh, actually, no, I'm not physical. Okay. Okay. That's an 18. Yeah. Um, dire wolf. Something along those lines. Um, probably a shadow version of a deer. Um, you know, just in general, that Creatures, yeah. non-native creatures that are in here for a long time have a tendency to adapt. Um, this would appear to be wolf tracks and deer tracks. You mm-hmm. should be aware that the creatures that you encounter here will exhibit signs of this plague. So, be on your guard. Will they still be edible? 
Shadow Mastiff isn't that bad, actually. It just takes forever to cook. It's because the meat dims the light of the fire. Makes it so you have to slow roast it. But yes, it's edible. Slow roasted. Mm. Careful now, you'll make me hungry. <laughs> Off we go. Did you pack no rations? <laughs> I packed a few. But nothing beats slow roasted meat. I should also warn you all. Well, sorry to interrupt, but necrotic energy. It is native to this plane. Many of the creatures that you encounter here, myself included, will be rather tolerant of that particular sort of energy. One last thing I will hey. say before we go to break is Hal Saeed and Alva you two, as you begin traveling in the direction of um, where your first party left, you see a single lone raven following you, just keeping an eye on you quietly and watching. And we will go to um, our break. Everybody, please take a moment to hydrate, stretch, um, Hydrate, stretch, pet your pets, and we will be back in like in like ten minutes. Bye. Oh baby, I love your madness. It's Welcome to our Patreon. Here on Open for Adventure, we are making high quality Dungeons and Dragons content, folks. We have a great big world to share with you. And by becoming a patron, you can help us explore and expand upon this adventure. With your support, we can invest in more amazing artwork, better mics, fancy cameras, and overall stream quality. Not to mention, help us get some amazing new merch that we can use for giveaways. What do you get by becoming a patron? I'm so glad you asked. Let's take a look at the different levels and give you a sneak peek at what you can get at each tier. Did you know that the family of the First Lord Theo, the leader of the Rebellion Against the Empire, actually invented firearms nearly 25 years prior to the current campaign. The designs for this high-tech weapon are the Delaney family's best-kept secret. Also, they were originally invented by the late First Lady Victoria, Theo's mother. Access to lore leaks like this is what you can expect from the first tier, written in blog-style posts after each weekly session. Ever wondered what goes on off-camera? The next three tiers give you exactly with stolen moments, you can get access to text-based roleplay moments, highlighting experiences that don't make it onto the stream, like Leona's training session with Ray and Esme. Stolen Moments Plus gives you access to roleplay moments featuring our guests, non-player characters, and historical figures, featuring the likes of Marshall, Annalena, and even the Empress herself. And Roleplay Addiction takes us to a whole other level. This tier gives you exclusive 30-minute videos of canon interactions not otherwise seen on stream, like late-night drunken interactions between paladins or tender moments featuring your favorite character ships. The Warm Fuzzies is super simple. It's everything I've listed so far, and also you get your name on stream after our weekly regular sessions. Every session. And our Undying Love. And finally, the most epic of all Patreon tiers. Drum roll, please. The Loremaster. This ultimate and final tier gets you first look access at all of the content going into our upcoming official Open for Adventure campaign setting. Lore, maps, monsters, items, dungeons, dragons. A. Hey. Go ahead, have a look around make yourself at home, and consider becoming a patron to help us make this fantasy world a little bit closer to reality.
Oh, hi. My name is Express Love. I'm the Sinmarian god of coffee. Did you know that in Sinmaria, every cup of coffee is made with found familiar coffee beans? That's canon. In Sinmaria, every cup of coffee is good coffee because it's made with love by found familiar. Did you know that every bag of found familiar coffee features artwork from incredible members of the tabletop gaming community? That's canon. Each blend and roast of found familiar coffee features cool D&D &D names like Thieves' Cant, Face Death, and Pact Magic. In Sinmaria, every royal meeting that Ray attends features the Cartographer's Blend, a brew of coffee made by found familiar in conjunction with Devon Rue. Now that's canon. Found familiar coffee. Buy it today.
Hello, everybody, and we are back from break. Um, we last left off with our group beginning to make their way through this forest in the middle of the Shadowfell. Before we left for break, both Alva and Hal Saeed noticed a single lone raven silently flying through the branches and following them. Are there any conversations you would like to have as you travel before we continue on? Al doesn't say anything, but he visibly tenses. Is something the matter? Yes, but to what degree I am uncertain. Then we must be on guard. As though we were not to be on guard prior. <laughs> uh, Alva, do you say anything? Uh, no. I will not say anything uh, specifically about the bird. But is that the only thing that's in the sky? That you can or are there like other... Well, mm, with your limited vision of a uh, light source, um, it's really hard to tell for you. Speaking of light source, while you're traveling, um, is the method you're using for um, illumination always going to be your light cantrip on your torch? Uh, predominantly right now, yes. Okay. I believe light lasts an hour, and you will need to recast it. I need you to roll me a spellcraft check, please, as you attempt to cast light again. Okay. So it's going to be a, a d20 plus your um, charisma modifier. Uh, so that's a 17. As you cast it again, you do have to... Push your magic through kind of like a, not necessarily a fog, but a barrier to get your torch to illuminate. It was an effort. It felt like the light was just wanted to be snuffed out. But you're able to. Um, you, everyone would just kind of hear like this, uh, like chuckle, and then. Kind of like, ah, well, it'll have to try harder next time. It will. Agatha, is there anything you would like to say before I move on? Um, I'm just probably watching very closely around us and also kind of when I'm not watching around, I'm kind of just feeling like, then think how I feel like personally, like how things are seemingly affecting me um, with the stir and the, the dream. I want to keep a close eye on that. All right. Um, it seems to have since settled since you've come across the threshold, but it is more apparent to you like, you, you've always known it's there. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like removing a veil. Where you are really just noticing it. Okay. As you continue on, eventually the th trees do thin out and they break. And you are looking upon what seems to be a savanna with just low shrubs with the occasional uh, tree with a large canopy. In the distance, you see a couple things. In one direction, you see a light, kind of similar to what Alva is holding, a torch. Um, it's bobbing as if moving and definitely in the air, so it's not on the, it's not close to the ground. In another direction, you see a tall, it's not a castle or a fortress, but definitely a walled area. Uh, you can see pointed tips of buildings. No light. 
Um, Alva, you probably wouldn't see this. This is probably most prominent to Agatha uh, most because I think you have the longest dark vision. And possibly Hal Said as well. I don't remember what your uh, shadow sorcerers get, but... 120 feet. Yeah. Okay, so Hal Said and Agatha, you're able to see this. Um, though, no details, just the shapes. Well, there seems to be a light source of some sort in that direction. And some sort of fortress, perhaps, settlement in the other. Hmm. Shall we so. investigate the fortress or the light? If we're perhaps. lucky, perhaps the light is who we're looking for, but... That is true. Also, uh, Swiss... Swiss? Swiss. Ah. Swiss uh, noted the feeling of the light in the darkness. Perhaps this was the light that was being referred to. Oh, that was Priscilla. Oh, Priscilla. Priscilla is the one that mentioned that when um, Ugo Go was asking about um, scrying across the threshold. Ah, right. Yeah. Then let us approach the light and. I would recommend that we scout it ahead of time. This, this would is be wise. The home, this is the home of darkness. It would be wise to remember that light here is often used to attract strays like moths in the material play how far away does the light seem to be Can I tell how far? Uh, it's hard to tell exact, but definitely outside your 120 foot vision. Definitely in the hundreds of feet. Um, okay. But with how uh, clear this area is and just the nature of the shadow fell in general, when there is a light source, it is very apparent. Okay. So the fact that you can see it is not odd. Um, just rolling over from your arcana check from earlier, you would know that it is just a nature of the plane to be able to see light source for very, very long distances. You said it's only uh, a couple hundred feet away? Yes, several. Definitely, I'd say over three, less than 800. Okay, so. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I can go scout it really quickly. It would only take me moments. Um, I can also move fairly quickly in, in the darkness. So between the two of us, we could get there and back fairly quickly. And then we just wait here. Oh I'm gonna agree God. with this. <laughs> How fast can you move? Um, well, I have Shadow Walk. Uh, can you read that for me? I know, is it uh, just going from shadow to shadow? Uh, when you are in dim light or darkness as a bonus action, you can magically teleport up to 120 feet to an unoccupied space you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. Okay, you would have to use that several times. Um, yeah. Hal Said? Um, I, I move 65 feet, and when I take the dash action, I get to add an additional 10 feet. So in 24 seconds, he can move 300 feet. I'm sorry, how many seconds? Six seconds? 24. 24. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> like, I'm monks, not- Monks, man! I'm not- <laughs> Monks! Just becomes Usain Bolt. <laughs> so he's darting and Agatha's just teleporting forward. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to take out a dice set and be like, Ugo, would you like to play a, a game of dice? <laughs> I think I would. 
<laughs> just, just watch that zoom, watch teleport, teleport, teleport. It's just like, I'm going to grasp the one normal thing here. And that we is know our strengths. <laughs> then at the last five, at the last 50 feet, he's just going to take off into the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This party is so extra. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> um, Hal Saeed and Agatha, please make stealth checks. I don't think there's any problems with you getting there. Oh boy. Um, let's see. Twenty-eight. Okay. My shadowy friends, you should. I hope there are not any issues. Fourteen. You're. Are you flying, or are you teleporting? No. Is that? A, well, I'm teleporting. You're teleporting. Okay. Yeah. Um. How uh, you both? See, wait, how far? How close are you getting? Within uh, dark vision range. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. For me, that's sixty feet. Okay, that's sixty feet for you. Okay. So I'm a little further back. Okay, in that case, neither of you seem to be noticed as you approach a small group. Uh, there's four travelers, all four humanoid shape. Um, you can't really tell colors because it's the shadow fell, so it's really more of grays and blacks uh, to your vision. But you see four. Uh, creatures that look similar to Alva, but some of their hair is made out of water. These would be water genasi. And they are carrying um, a couple bullseye lanterns. And they just seem to be traveling. They are very quiet. Even when you were back there, um, as you were like uh, traveling away, noise carried for a bit when uh, Alva was asking Ugo Go if he wanted to play dice. Um, <coughs> I'll be looking to Al Saeed to see what he does before I either move closer or further away. Okay. Uh, Hal is probably going to descend um, in front of them. Just, I mean, you no know harm. Descending out of nowhere. <laughs> um, um, the four of them are obviously startled. They did not see you. And at least two put their hands on weapons at their hips. Um, just kind of cautiously looking at you. Uh, He's still marching my just in front of them. Yeah, Mask if he tries to descend, I'll walk forward. <laughs> Hello? It Hello? would be wise to hood your light. You are a beacon in this land. One in the back pipes up. We need the light to see. How did you end up here? They kind of give you a look. Uh, just make me a quick uh, persuasion check. So Hal's charisma is a, a, a full on nine. So I'm not even gonna attempt sure. to help you with this. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. 20, 30. Plus, he's a spooky dude wearing this right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are unnerving. At least, at least to look a little bit more approachable. Uh, a little. The four foot eleven uh, human woman is much more mm -hmm. approachable than this masked figure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, he's like 6'2", so it's like really creepy. Like... Uh, there is a massive height difference between Agatha and Hal Saeed. Mm hmm. Um, some well, the one with uh, very long watery hair in the front uh, pipes up we had a 
a, a, a portal appear on the plane of water. We kind of popped in. How long have you been here? They kind of side-eye Agatha while they're about to answer you. Kind of looking to Agatha that it's okay. <laughs> about a week. Are you well? This plane can have effects on the minds of others. The one up front and the one in back kind of give you a look, but the two in the middle are looking off to the side, eyes distant. Do you have food? We have food. I'm okay. Compatriot in the back is okay. These two have been... Well... Rattled. Apathetic. I see. Did the portal you came through close before you could go back through, or did you... just start wandering? Oh, uh, we were... If we stayed in the plane of water, we would have died, so we took our... I see. We took the unknown route instead of death. Well, we also came through a portal, though it wasn't on the plane of water. We could perhaps give you a general direction of where it is. So hopefully you could make your way th there. You didn't come from the plane of fire, did you? No. Material plane. I, that would be appreciated. Uh, we have two other companions further back. Um, perhaps we should meet up with them and then we can point you in the direction we came from. Thank you. Of course. I am Al Said. And I'm Agatha. The four of the, the t one in front and the one in back. Um, one introduces themselves as Stream, Geyser, and then the two in the middle are Ford and Pebble. Um, Alva and Ugo go. How's your dice game going? <laughs> you know, I don't know. How is it going, Alva? <laughs> Um, I, just knowing Alva and Hugo, uh, we definitely get a little rowdy. Probably. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so definitely get a little rowdy. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, uh, Alva starts out with the lead, but then, you know, Hugo definitely catches up and now it's neck and neck. I almost feel like it goes from like actual legitimate dice to like you roll, he like wax, you know, the, the whatever it's sitting on, so the dice jump just to see what happens. Oh yeah, there's definitely blatant cheating happening. <laughs> oh yeah, on both sides. Just cackle at it every single time. Not the personal, just 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 having some fun. At the tail end. Yeah, it's a at the tail end of Agatha and Halsey's conversation, you do hear like Rowdiness. <laughs> Agatha just shakes her head, <laughs> knowing it came from them. Mm -hmm. It would appear that your group is not the only one that is a beacon to everything in the Shadowfell. Yep. But for different reasons. They seem a little joyous in this place of sorrow. Well, we did just arrive, so that might have something to do with it. <sighs> okay, um, are you coming back with us to the rest of your group? Though I don't know how I feel about... At least we were quiet. 
well, as long as we stay together, this if something attacks us, we can fight it together. Uh, Noir, did you say something? I think you were too quiet or uh, were muted. He, he just says, uh, we will get them quiet. <laughs> One way or the no one way or another. <laughs> um, sorry, were you going back with them, or are you scouting the other place as well? Um, you know, I'll go back with them. I will scout the other place. Okay. Uh, Agatha, you walk this group of four uh, water genasi back to Alva and Ugogo. Uh, Alva and Ugo go. Uh, Agatha returns with four water genasi in tow. Two are Friends. looking off into the distance. Uh, the other two are more alert. Hmm. Are your friends in need of aid? They um, came to this plane from the, the uh, plane of water, and I offered to show them the direction in which we came from so they can hopefully escape this place. I thought mm. it was best to come back here. Have you able trackers among you? The one in the front um, speaks. I, I know a little bit, but... And then she juts a thumb to the one directly behind her. Um, Ford was the most able tracker among us. I can, I can follow footprints. Excellent. If you follow those, and he points at Fox's massive footprints, you will find our route. I think I could do that. Have you need of an escort? I think we'll be okay. Just nodding along um... sagely. <laughs> Uh, Alva will summon, uh, good berries. Okay. And, um, we'll go over to the water genasi, you know, arms full of good berries. Um, and we'll say in, uh, she'll start in primordial. Yeah. And she'll say, uh, cousins, it is tragic to see you in such a dark space, but... Hopefully, you will get out of here soon. And think of the stories that you have to tell now. They respond in primordial. Thank you, cousin. I hope our the well wishes will be able to carry us through to a new day. And good berries. Here, have some. Maybe they will lighten your soul. And the group takes partakes in good berries. Hal Said. Yep. The, uh, how high are you flying? Yeah, uh, 75. 75 um, move speed? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You are able to make your way up to this fortress. I'm going to need you to make another stealth check, please. Okie dokie. Another 28. Dang. 18 plus 10. Oof. Um, I was born in the dark. You were. Molded by it. Did not see the light of day until I was already a man. I did. It was <laughs> nothing but blinding. It's okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is... Hold on. <laughs> it is simple enough for you to sneak upon this it's hard to call it a settlement, but it, you definitely see buildings. You see a wall with um, guards patrolling the top. Homes. What seems, it's not a castle or a fortress, as I already said, but definitely a large stone, sturdy building centered in the middle. What's the word I'm looking for? Settlement? Somewhere it's similar to a settlement, but um, maybe like a fort, like a military fort is the most okay. uh, comparable um, in the center. And you do see figures walking around. They don't seem to be Shatterkai. Mm. 
mean, it's not all military people. You definitely see unarmed, uh, humanoid-shaped figures. Ones that are not carrying weapons, but there are others that are carrying weapons. He... Mm. I'm... I'm going to fly deeper into the fort. Like um, descending into? Yeah, I'm gonna de- I'm gonna hit hit ground. Okay. And uh, oh, is is there like an obvious official or a leader? Not on the streets. You don't see anything from where you can see, uh, from where you are. Um. Yeah, that's that's enough. Uh, he, he's just gathering info, so uh, he's just gonna fly back to his group. Okay. When you do touch down, though, I'm assuming you touch down in like between two buildings and like an alleyway or something along mm-hmm. those lines. Okay. We're, when we're you Clark do... Kidding it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? We're Clark Kidding it. Just <laughs> down. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, your passive perception is pretty high. Um, some of these creatures do pass by the alleyway. They um, are mostly humanoid shaped. Um, It really depends on who's passing by, but some are reminiscent of humans. Some are reminiscent of elves with the pointed ears. Occasionally you do see a very short figure, so possibly a gnome or a halfling and one in the shape of like a dragonborn with the maw and um, scales kind of made out of shadows. They they all seem to be dark and made out of shadow. You get an odd vibe. Settlements that are not Shatterkai are very rare to come by in the Shadowfell. Not uncommon. Um, Occasionally the Shadowfell does suck up places from the material plane. But people surviving is first time you've seen it. Strange. Um. God, he's tormented because he wants to know, but it's better to do it with a greater number. So he's just gonna look up and just do his Superman thing and fly back to the group. Okay. Make one more check. Uh, stealth? Yes. Fly in, fly oh. out. That that one's not great. That's a 15. I rolled a 5. You do, uh... Hold on. Oh, that's... Fuck. Yeah. You do hear a couple shouts from behind you, but you're way too fast. Um, They weren't, like... They were shouts of startlement. As you... Clark Kent out of there. <laughs> Superman out. <laughs> ah! Yeah, he's he's just gonna go back to the rest of the group. Uh, I would like to sneak up on uh, Ugo and Alva, though. Oh, that'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> for you, for, for Ugo, anyway. <laughs> I don't know about Alpha. <laughs> Do I roll a stealth check in this? I'm gonna let this be up to you guys for how you want to handle this. If you want to roll, mean, you can roll. I'll roll, but I, I don't have high hopes for him. I mean, what you roll a five, this you still get so a five. This is so petty. This is a waste. <laughs> no, that's a that's a nat twenty. Yep. Fuck it. <laughs> Yeah. This is stuff was a 30. Which is sad because he got an 18. I was proud of him. <laughs> oh, my oh no. It's gonna descend like, down upon you two quietly. We just, yeah. Can can we say it was something to the effect of like on the one hand, Ugo's used to be in like 
on somewhat of an alert and being out in the middle of nowhere and exposed. So it, like, even though he's been rowdy and loud, it's like, I, I'm kind of aware. It doesn't matter here. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just going to go, I could hear you too from hundreds of feet away. <laughs> <laughs> like right in your Get, ear. Like, slow mo <laughs> swipe at you. <laughs> oh no. no uh, oh, Alva would definitely let out like a little bit of like a yip. <laughs> yip. How does Agatha react to this? Because I don't know. I don't think you can beat a 30. Probably not. Uh, she was probably, while they were doing dice, reading a book. So she probably jumped, but. He wasn't in her ears, so it was more of a, oh, I didn't realize you came back. And at this point, the water genasi have left following Ox's footprints the way you came. There is a settlement only a couple hundred feet away from here, filled with shadow humanoids of all different races. I have never seen such a settlement in the Shadowfell before. Usually the Shadowfell can absorb land from the material plane, but the idea of anybody surviving that process, it's impossible. I would love to return to learn more, but I could use your numbers. I would love to see what you are talking about. Also, we are looking for two humans. So perhaps they have also seen or know of and or are amongst them. Very true. Um, even if they aren't, it could be interesting to see what happened with the settlement. If it was sucked up by the Shadowfell or something else. There were many of them there should this turn combative prepare yourself though they did not seem to be aggressive is this a situation that would call for more stealthy measures or are we just going to walk in and introduce ourselves and take it from there why not oh. both those who I wish believe. to be unseen remain unseen. And we do some talking. I agree with Ugogo. I agree as well. We could see how they react when we walk up. So, uh, Ugo and I will proceed as in normal everyday travelers. And then uh, how Agatha just do your thing there are no everyday travelers merchants in the shadow fell but i understand your meeting be safe we just thought what did you not see this they're just yes but there have never been any shadow folk like this i must confess to you I don't know what's going on here, so just be safe. We'll just have to find out. And take care of horse. <laughs> he hands you the reins. Gonna just tie horse's reins to the other side of Ox's reins. <laughs> horse right next to the- <laughs> No, 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 no. It's <laughs> Other Mistletoe! It's uh, time to bully! <laughs> so that there's rhino between them because if he's bullying the baby, we cannot have that. No, protect the pony at all costs. Yes. Protect the pony. I oh. expect memes out of this. Protect, protect. I've known Mistletoe for one day, but I would kill everyone. <laughs> if it was so. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Hal is gonna give course a kiss on the main and then <laughs> um yeah for this i'm gonna pull my broom out and fly up 
so I'm not on the ground. Okay. Go, 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 and Alva, you are able, it's simple enough to begin making your way towards this walled settlement while Agatha and Hal Saeed fly above. Uh, neither of you see those two because I'm assuming you're just definitely not for Alva. Alva can't see. Um, and if Ugo Go can see, it's barely <laughs> with how dark it is here. And they quickly leave his range, so it's just like, where'd they go? I don't know. They disappeared. I don't know. Um, but it's really simple enough to begin making your way there, especially, and once you're more or less within range, you do, there is movement. Uh, there is the shuffling of sound coming across this savanna, where it seems like people are making their way towards the front because your light is not concealed. No. In fact, Hugo's going to actually undim the hooded lantern to where it's doing its, it's not its full range of light, but right. more than it was. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, um, the torch won't be, I, I won't, I'll dismiss the light charm on the torch. Okay. Regardless, as you get closer, you do see a couple of the figures I described earlier. Um, just medium-sized humanoids w wielding one sword a spear, not 100% uh, threatening, but cautious and wary as you approach. Strangers, what news do you have of these lands? The one in the middle speaks. State your business. We are travelers. We are looking for our companions, two humans. Travelers. People don't travel here. Unfortunately, as this place is encroaching on the material plane, we must travel here. They all kind of like look at each other, just do that side eye. Do you want to roll me a persuasion check, Ugoga? I would. That is a dirty 20. A couple more glances are exchanged between the three of them. And they will lower their weapons cautiously. We don't know anything. But we can take you to the leader here. Who might know something. Thank you. The two move out of the way and open the third opens the gate behind them. It's like a double, it's like a ten foot wide gate once it's open. And they step aside. This has already gone considerably better than I expected. <laughs> I know, right? They just let us in. I'm like, what who does that? Well, we are not hostile. Yet. Uh, it is refreshing. Um, Alva, when you get closer and walk by, you do notice that they do have suspicion in their eyes and just antsy. In fact, as you are led by the third one, you do see a lot of anxiousness out of a lot of the people here. Agatha and Hal Saeed, what are you... How are you following? Are you... We're landing, um, still following? Now that I see them, now that I see that they've crossed the threshold, I'm gonna uh, land on a rooftop, I'm assuming, their, their rooftops, and just f follow them from the rooftops, staying in the shadows. Okay. Um, and I will stay up in the air enough that I can see them and see how Saeed kind of just back a little more so I'm watching what's happening. But you're still flying? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, Halsey, you'd make a stealth check, please. Let's go. All the stealth checks. <laughs> Not as good. 80. I would waste my 20 on a petty scare my own party. <laughs> stealth <laughs> check. That's okay. That's fine. Ugh. Um, you said it was dirt a dirty twenty. No, uh, I got an eighteen. Eighteen, okay. There's a lot of two story buildings, so you you seem okay so far. Okay. Um, but you are able to follow them as Alva and Ugo go. You are led towards the center uh, stone building. I'll be right back. And they enter. And we're staying outside? Is that what the... Yeah, they... It was obvious that uh, they would come back out, is what is implied. Is the raven still in the sky? That I can see? Not in the sky, but it is following you. It occasionally perches down on a... Um, and when you were in the woods, it was on a tree. And it was following you to here. Now it's like perched on a rooftop. Sufficiently. It, you know it followed you. It's hard to see for you. But it was definitely following you on the way here. A couple minutes later. you The door opens again. Kevison said that he would see you. The fact Thank that you. if you go straight and then take a left, there is a door. He is in there. And where should we leave our and um, our mounts at this time? motions to a um, a post and scarpers Yuko leads Ox to the post does not tie him to the post and is prepared to leave just pat Ox keep them here <laughs> Uh, yeah, Alva pats mistletoe uh, and then passes by a horse. Uh, thinks better about patting horse and instead just gives like a, a gentle head nod in horse's general direction Respect. and follows Ugo. Agatha and Hal Sayid, um, they are entering this building. Are you following? Um, I'd like to see if I could find any other entrance into the building. Okay. I want to, let's do Agatha first, then I'll get to you. Okay. Um, if the guard walks away from the door, I'll try to land, like, behind him as, like, as he's walked away to follow in. Mm -hmm. There's definitely less people, um, closer to this fortress than... Uh, in the outskirts and more towards the buildings. So um, I'll say that is simple enough. Um, Alva and Ugo go. Agatha has joined you. Well, how did they seem when you first walked up? Cautious. Very suspicious. Again, it does not seem that there are many travelers in this area, so they were a bit confused, but we are going to talk to the leader now. Fair enough. I think I will be upset if it turns out to be some kind of necromancer. Perhaps that's suppose... rude to think, but... I suppose it's a possibility here, but we'll have to see, I guess. Do you, the three of you enter? Okay. Hal Saeed, 
you said you want to try to find a different entrance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just in case they're walking into a trap, I'm gonna be able to get them out. Okay. Uh, roll a either investigation or perception. Ooh. Perception. Okay. Twenty-three. With uh, your aerial advantage, the fact that you can have an aerial advantage, there are a couple of. Um, before I finish this sentence, do you plan on leaving the same way you entered? Or do you plan on meeting up with them? If it turns out not to be a trap, I'll probably leave with them. Oh, no, no, no. If it turns out not to be a trap, I'll probably leave the way I came in. If it is a trap, I'll be leaving out there with them. Is a trap so if, with, if it is a trap with them, not a trap mm -hmm. the way you came. So like, yep. Okay. Um, so yes, there is a, a second story, uh, several second story windows um, that can be entered. Okay. Um, there are a couple towards the front, one or two or two towards the back. Back would probably be the better, uh, better <laughs> entryway. Okay. So that's, that's how he's doing it. Okay. As you enter this mysterious fortress of a people that even the native Shadar Kai Halseed is not aware of, uh, that's, we'll, we're going to end a couple minutes early. No! Okay. We only got five minutes. I know, it's all good. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. <laughs> yep. Thought about the ending with a different cliffhanger, but it's, I think it's better at next week. Um, anyway, <laughs> everybody, thank you for joining us for session two of Veil of Shadows. We're going to do uh, sign offs where everyone's going to tell you where uh, you can find them on social media, any other projects that we might have, um, and their favorite part. Uh, who wants to go first? I went first last time. <laughs> All right, yeah, I go last. Hi, everybody. I'm Noir. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok now because I remembered my password as the Noir Enigma. Um, uh, if you want to see where I'm at next, uh, um, tomorrow morning I'll be uh, producing and uh, playing in Kids on Bikes on the World 20 channel. And you can just look at my pin tweet to see where else I am. Favorite moment of this game, uh, of, the, of this session. Um, I liked our conversation. Like, I love the conversation of like, here's what I do. Here's how, you know, I, I just, I love team building moments like that. So just, you know, I, I loved Agatha's like, yo, I'm sorry I hit y'all with the fireball. It might happen again. <laughs> kind of <attitude. laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that's that's me. Popcorn it. Oh, popcorn. Yeah. Now I have the power. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to give it to Shadow. Hey, how's it going? Hi, I'm Shadow. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter at Shadow Book Cat. Um, mostly just pictures of my cat, but occasionally I tell you what I'm doing TTRPG things uh, across the web. Um, mostly for the next several Sundays, I'll be here open for adventure, 730 Central, doing Shadowfell. Um, and then 9 a.m. Pacific time next Sunday, May 2nd. I'll be over on Caitlin's birthday stream over on uh, a Theater Files uh, Twitch channel where I'm, it's a charity stream and I am in the Genesis one shot. Oh, favorite moment. Um, I think my favorite moment was Hal and Agatha uh intercepting and meeting another set of unlikely travelers and just how they were able to handle that without uh unnecessary conflict 
Um, and I'll pass it over to Forta. All right. Hi, I'm Forta. You can find me at, uh, on Twitter at Forta Vare. Um, you can find me at like Art Station and a couple other sites at LexArts with two X's, but like, honestly, I don't hardly ever post there anymore. It's sad, but true. Um, you can find me Saturday mornings for at least a couple more episodes over on Chromatic Chimera, where we're doing Mass Effect, and that's exciting. You can find me alternating Saturday evenings. So this coming Saturday, I'll be on Polished Cryptid's channel doing Blades in the Dark. I'll be GMing it, and it'll be hopefully exciting. And if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then Tuesday, you can find me uh, really early Tuesday morning for US folks. Um, also on Polished Cryptid channel doing more more uh, D&D stuff. So exciting. Favorite thing that happened tonight is that jump scare. <laughs> Favorite thing. Oh my gosh, it was so great. Oh, oh popcorn. Nice. I suppose it's my turn. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm Sev. Um, you can find me at Guildmaster Sev basically everywhere. Um, my stream schedule is kind of off at the moment. I'm reworking what I'm doing, so um, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll be posting on there whenever I go live again. Uh, and then uh, other than that, I'll be here on Sundays playing uh, this game. Um, my favorite moment, I think, was Alva and Ugo playing Dice and Shadow Fell. Uh, them just being rowdy and, and playing Dice in the middle of the Shadow Fell. Um, that leaves me. Hi, I'm Mare. You can find me on Twitter at Archmage of Dice. Um, every sa uh, Sunday evening, you can find me here. Um, DMing this lovely Shadowfell game. I also have a Twitch schedule set up. Go check it out. But on Saturday afternoons, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I run an Invisible Sun game on my channel. Um, they're about to enter the gray sun, and I'm so excited. Um, this coming Friday, I am playing in a game of Sunken at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Graham Cracker's channel. Sunken is a nautical horror where... Um, Spoiler alert, all the players will most likely die by the end. It's great. It's fun. It's going to be fine. And uh, next Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, I think, I'm going to be running a D&D 5e game set in this same setting, but this time in the Shadowfell's opposite, the Feywild. And it's going to be uh, wacky. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Have some fun incentives. Um, just so everyone knows, it'll the fundraiser will be going towards the Actors Fund if you want to join us that day. Um, my favorite part, besides the fact that y'all were playing dice, because I was going to say that, I think it was when like more than half, like about half the party was just saying Agatha to Agatha, yeah, if you need to drop another fireball on me, just do it. <laughs> um, and I think that's it. So everybody, we'll see you uh, next week. And have a lovely, lovely start of your week on Monday tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.